Hello, everyone, and thanks for making the time to join us. I've been doing a holiday webinar for quite a few years now. It really is one of my very favorites each year. And I have some, what I hope and think is great information to share. Uh, I would suggest that you might want to have a paper and pencil with you. And that's something I've never suggested before, but you might find it helpful to jot some of this down. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm Rita Wolfson. I am the founder of Financial Social Work, and I feel so fortunate to have dedicated the past 25 years of my life to this work and to have all of you and all of our students and graduates as part of my life and my work. So today's monthly free webinar, as you can see, is Money and Mental Health Self-Care Strategies for Holiday 2022. Let me point out that um, you can put the questions uh, in the chat box and we will answer as many as possible um, when we finish up. Uh, just a quick reminder of some of the most commonly asked questions and some suggestions. So you can uh, check the chat box for messages. Um, slides are not shared, they are proprietary, but you will receive the recording within a very short period of time so you can refer back to it. Then it's also posted on our website on our YouTube and Facebook page. Go ahead and type your questions into the question box um, and we'll answer them as time permits. There are no CEs or certificates of attendance for this webinar. I know that we get a lot of questions on that. So let me just start by saying that there aren't any, just what I hope is a lot of valuable and helpful information for everyone. So I do like to begin by asking everyone to take a deep breath in and then release it. I know that when we talk about money, it actually affects all of us as well as our clients. So let's do one more deep breath in and release it slowly through your mouth. Okay, I hope you'll stay tuned because we actually have a surprise gift for you at the end of this training. So it's the holidays and for many, it's the most wonderful time of the year. At least that's what the song says. But is it really? For so many people, it's the most stressful time of the year. I wonder where you fall in those two categories. If you've joined us before, you know that our financial social work affirmation really captures what this work is all about. And I do like to begin our free trainings by sharing it with you. It goes just for today, I will love myself enough to face my fears, practice self-acceptance and embrace hope. I'll silence my inner critic, speak my truth and make peace with myself and with my past. Just for today, I will give myself permission to eliminate toxic people, beliefs, and behaviors from my life. And just for today, I will prepare for a better tomorrow by healing my relationship with my money and with myself today. The goal being that if we start today, we'll continue tomorrow and forever. After. So 
to prepare for holiday 22, 2022, I just wanted to take a quick look back with you uh, so you see the difference between last year and this year. So last year, Cyber Monday was the highest revenue day of the season. And Black Friday came next. Now, most of you probably know that Amazon had a two-day promotion, Amazon Prime it's called, um, yesterday and the day before. That's the first time they ever did those two, they did two two-day promotions like that. I couldn't find the uh, revenue that those generated, but we all know that it had to be incredibly substantial. So I'm curious, I have a bunch of polls because I think that when you interact and participate with us, um, it's of greater value than my just telling you everything. So we do have some polls and therefore I didn't put this in a poll, but I'm curious how many of you know what Black Friday represents, why it's called Black Friday. Uh, the most recent person I asked that to actually did know. And Black Friday is the day each year when traditionally most retailers um, who have been in the red, in other words, running with debt up till that day, um, go into the black because that certainly used to be the biggest shopping day of the year. That doesn't seem to be the case any longer. So last year, nearly one third of holiday shoppers didn't get the gifts they ordered in time for the holiday. Many reasons for it, but certainly the supply chain was a major disruption, which is kind of the driving force uh, behind this year's shopping that we're just about to get into. On the left, those orange circles talk about gift cards. And it's interesting to see who actually uses and purchases gift cards. And I was recently asked why people aged 54 bought the most gift cards. And I would venture to guess that that's because it's just a whole lot easier. Unfortunately, many, many, too many gift cards are never used. So remember that. So again, finishing up with last year, this was the percentage of Americans who added holiday debt. This is last year, not this year. And you can see by generation where those numbers fell. But meanwhile, debt-related stress plagued more than 50% of borrowers across all demographics except for baby boomers and those with children all 18 or older. And I see a lot of statistics that show that parents with young children do spend and build more debt than most people. So let's get started with our first poll. Now, you will see this statistic, which is $1,381. That is a 2020 statistic. Last year, I noticed that this statistic of what, what most individuals spent was down a little. It was 1,200 something. But going on the graphic, you will see in a moment, I'm going to give you this poll and see your thinking on it. And if you here. Let's go. I'm going to launch it and see what you think. 
So if you spend how much money and this graphic you'll see gives us 87 months. And while that does seem like a very long time, apparently, well, I actually just added this today because I really wanted to have it for us uh, because it is a fact that it takes a very long time for most people to pay off the debt they build at the holidays. So I'll give you another 10 seconds and I'll share what you've said and then I'll show you. Okay. I assume, no, I probably have to. Okay, so I'm sharing the results and it's pretty interesting uh, because like most of you, I thought it was going to be a higher number, except for the fact that the number is still quite high. So in 2020, the average holiday debt was 1381. And in 2021, I told you it was a little lower. Three in 10 Americans don't pay off their holiday bills until the next holiday season. That's a long time. And let's see. So if you owe that amount of money at 18% and took 87 payments, which is a very long time, the total interest would be almost as much as the money you spent. And it would be $2,458. However, you should all know, and I wanna make sure you know, that as interest rates are raised, you are likely paying a fair amount more than 18%. And I would ask all of you to take a moment and check out what your APR actually is. Okay, here we are, holiday 2022. What percentage of Americans do you think plan to use buy now, pay later? for their holiday shopping. All right, let's find that one. That's not it. There it is. Okay, let me launch it. That's not it either. Okay, Rita, wrong poll. Okay, I got a Okay, well, some of you were voting, so. Uh, we're gonna to come to the answer on this slide a little later. When I close this, I'll do the buy now, pay later. Okay. All right. We always have great partition, participation from our audience. So let's get you all more involved and Give you another few seconds to vote. And then I'll share this one. And <laughs> of course, we have a very smart audience. And most of you do have a right. Um, let me share that. Okay. And you will see in a little while that it will be credit cards. However, you're not wrong with all of the rest of them and certainly not with buy now, pay later per se. Let me hide that one. I've never made this mistake before, but hey. Uh, how much? Let's 
What percentage is that? Wow. I don't even see that Paul in here. So I guess we'll just go ahead and show you how many people plan to use buy now, pay later. I hope that if you're in our audience, you all know that this is a pretty terrible idea. Buy now, pay later is not really regulated yet. And you see that almost 50% of Americans will not shop if buy now, pay later isn't offered. Think about it and think about why they won't shop there. And think about the fact that when you use these different major forms of buy now, pay later, uh, you basically don't have much control or knowledge of which one you owe how much to and what that total is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I do want to tell you that currently, uh, not only is it not regulated the way credit cards are regulated, but the consumer credit agencies are each developing their own methods for dealing with it. Because if you or your clients um, aren't paying off these buy now, pay laters, uh, it's gonna, it is, uh, they are, you are promised or you are told that it won't affect your credit. But I do need to tell you, it will eventually affect your credit. Okay, so let's keep going. Do you plan to do most? We just have a bunch of uh, polls up front and then we're gonna get um, into the real purpose um, of the webinar, which is to give you strategies um, for reducing your stress at the holidays. Okay, let's get the right poll this time and launch it. So let's see where most of you plan to do your shopping. All right, I love it. So many of you are participating. Okay. Wow, come on, let's have a few more. This is our highest participation. Okay, we have 75%. I'll give you another 10 seconds. Wow, very interesting. Very interesting and somewhat different, you'll see, than some of the statistics I'm going to share with you. Let me share this. Okay. So you see, people are planning on doing both, but the majority is online. And should I admit that if I do any, it will be online? It will. I'd love to know what the other is. If you um, want to put that in the chat box, we can look at it in a little while, um, or the question box, I guess, um, which sometimes becomes our answer box. Okay, let's hide that. Okay, and see what the statistics show. Okay, so 24% of holiday shoppers say they plan to spend more this holiday season. This, you know, I, lo I don't love statistics, but I find them really, really interesting. And when I first saw the statistics, I couldn't help think. So some will and some won't, but you saw where all of you are and can just factor that in. 
here's what's interesting to me, and I think might be interesting to you, because it says that people are leaning towards purchasing items in the store. Um, personally, because of COVID and because of guns, I would not, I'm not planning on going to any stores. Okay, so shopping habits vary greatly by retail audience. I found this interesting. I hope you do too. You can see the whole point being, I started off by saying, let's look a little bit at last year. So this year, last year is driving this year. And that's usually the case because people didn't get their orders in time for the holidays. Holiday shopping started very early this year. Um, the prime shopping days were a couple months ago. And that's kind of like the grand entrance into holiday shopping. So I just saw this cartoon today and I thought I would share it with you can actually remember, and it's not that many years ago, when I thought it was amazing that Halloween shopping began in the summer. And here we have the reality. This is, to me, indicating that holiday shopping is starting at Halloween, but believe me, it has started. So how much do you feel inflation will affect your own holiday spending. Okay, I think there's only one more poll. So if you want to be part of our polling, this is the time. Okay. Again, this is just to see, you know, get a sense of where we are as helping professionals and gearing it maybe also to what you think your clients will be doing. Okay. 68% of you have voted. Come on. Okay, 70%. Another few seconds. We want to get over 70. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. We got to 74. Thanks, everybody. It's kind of more fun when you all participate. And here's what you said. Well, I would certainly, myself, in case you're interested, <laughs> be at somewhat to a significant amount. I mean, it's there. And, and certainly all of the slides that I showed, I hope they have indicated to you, although I still have a bunch before we get into the coping strategies, um, to share with you uh, that people want discounts. They truly, truly want discounts. They want coupons. And we're just going to get to that part now. Oops. I have no idea what I did with that. Okay. How do I get rid of it? I'm not sure. I clearly clicked on something I shouldn't have. Okay. So maybe I need to X that out. No. All right. Okay. So. I know that this graphic is hard to read. Let me just go through it quickly. It was the best thing I could find. Uh, and it's, you know, 2022. So it's, it's the most recent. 84% of Americans worry about the impact of inflation. And 43% say they worry a lot about it. 81% have adjusted their spending due to inflation. 
72% plan to spend under $500 on gifts this season, as opposed, well, you have to also separate out, are we talking, and, and we should be including this, but remember, your spending isn't exclusively, or um, your costs aren't exclusively on gifts. You have entertainment, you have uh, decorations, um, you have other factors that go into the total cost of your holiday. 52% plan to spend less on gifts compared to last year. 51% say they definitely plan to use online coupons, apps, or browser extensions to save money. And 24% say they probably plan to use online coupons, apps. That's what people are looking for today. And I, for one, appreciate it. Oh, God, I don't suppose you can get, no, you probably can't get rid of that thing for me. Okay, so shoppers do and will be choosing the retailer that offers the best promotions. Again, so reiterating this fact, this is what is anticipated um, this holiday season. And as consumers anticipate battling against price increases, uh, deals promotions will be most important to them. Okay, I'm trying to advance these slides. Okay, so 30% of people plan to increase online spending. Uh, definitely driven by millennial parents in Gen Z's and in-store preferences, 36% um, plan to increase in-store spending. Again, Gen Z and millennial parents. So I would, I thought about doing a poll and it's about, I think we have enough polls, but the reality, so some of you in the poll we did, did say that you planned to use both. And the reality is that's more likely to increase the amount you spend. But I get it. I really get it. Um, the poll I w had wished I could include was, where do you think I found the majority of these statistics? If you care to um, share what you think, I am curious and uh, we look at it in the uh, chat box um, or the Q&A box, I guess it is. And I thought as we start winding down here, um, this is about who buys from where and you can see that uh, social media ads are popular with Gen Z. Online coupons or discounts are popular with millennials and parents. And print coupons and discounts or deals are popular with Gen X and most popular with baby boomers. Compared to last year, how concerned are you about being able to pay for your holiday gifts. So I don't have to explain that to you. That's why I love this graphic. It's very obvious. And you will see that on, on most of these slides, I do indicate where I got those statistics from. How do consumers plan to pay for their holiday spending. This was the poll that um, I did ahead of time before. And the answer is, as you mostly knew, um, credit cards, credit cards, credit cards. Uh, I see, buy now, pay later. Um, this does not indicate 
the ages of uh, the people that were questions on this stress survey, uh, but I'm pretty sure that 6% is incredibly low. And people like it because it's not supposed to add interest. But if you don't pay it, there will be interest. So how much do you expect holiday shopping and its related costs to affect your stress level? Okay. Those lucky 32%. Okay. How do your friends and family's expectations contribute to your financial stress? Not a question that we think very much about, consciously anyway, but definitely something to consider personally and with clients. Oops, last one. What percentage of consumers think their holiday shopping will have a negative effect on their health. Let's make sure. Ask, yep, it's the last one. I will share it with you. It's kind of interesting. Let's each of the statistics is somewhat different. But my hope is that you get an overall view of spending trends and what this means to you personally and to clients on, in our professional lives. All right, 60% of you have voted. I'll just give a few more seconds. Doesn't look like we're going to get to 70%. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. 66%. Let's share the results. And I think this one is going to actually surprise you i really do your your answer surprised me let's look and the answer is 66 percent are worried that their holiday shopping will have a negative effect on their financial health i would think it could conceivably be more Okay, to review, rising gas prices mean streamlined shopping trips. Something you may not necessarily have thought of or factored in. Um, certain populations like to get their deals by email, others by social media, some by newspaper. Others by print circulars and others by online coupons or discounts. And consumers are exploring more shopping options. By the way, most of these statistics, I have to go to retailing sources because they spend time identifying these trends, obviously, so that they can increase their bottom lines. So we finished that. I'd like to just tell you a little bit about financial social work. It is why we're here. We do sponsor this monthly free webinar. We've been doing it for over a decade. It is financial social work is the intersection of politics, the economy, social work, economic, gender, social justice.
on a micro, meso, and macro level. It is heavily psychosocial. We examine the thoughts, feelings, attitudes, beliefs, values, and experiences, which is what makes it so unique, that drive financial behavior, which is how we earn, spend, save, share, and borrow. And the reason it's a behavioral model is because until and unless behavior changes, nothing changes. That's important to remember. So the heart or the core of my work is about healing our relationship with our money and a relationship with ourselves. So there's self-discovery, self-care and self-healing. And on the relationship with money side, we have to recognize and take ownership of our own financial health and wellness. The model is interactive, reflective, and strength base. It's holistic, multidisciplinary, and healing, and so much more. We have thousands of graduates across the country and around the world, including Australia, Finland, England, Canada, Japan, China, and many other countries. So now we get to the good part self-care strategies for the holiday. So let's begin with consider using cash. It is a proven research fact that when we use cash, we spend less. However, we are ever so close to actually being a cashless society. There are stores, as you probably have seen, that no longer take cash. So consider tracking your emotions. What is it and when is it and why is it you feel like shopping? What are those triggers? Don't think of shopping as an activity or a pastime, find other ways to spend time with yourself or with others. Certainly reducing access to your credit cards will inevitably reduce your spending. Consider a metal ball, put them in water and freeze them in the freezer because you can't put a metal ball in the microwave. Consider finding the balance between enjoying today while preparing for tomorrow. It's not a simple balance. It requires a lot of things and certainly one of them is having financial goals. Consider asking safe, trusted friends and family for help handling specific tasks and obligations. Consider paying attention to your unhealthy behaviors because that, they, that, they really represent your fears and your worries. And the more you ignore them, the more you empower them. Pay attention. Remember, financial social work is a behavior model. So everything that we're recommending and discussing always comes back to behavior. Cause as I said, until and unless behavior changes, nothing changes. And here we have developing, consider developing a personal financial self-care plan. And that should include eating healthily, getting enough sleep, spending time on things you enjoy, on hobbies, because that is a better way of spending time and avoiding or reducing spending money. Set personal and financial boundaries. You do have the right not to build debt. So if you remember a number of slides previously, I talked about how do family and friends impact 
how you spend. We don't want to allow others to determine how we spend our money. I have the right not to take on more than I can handle. I'm sure many of you use boundaries in the work you do, but you may not cons have considered them, how to use them with financial stress, anxiety, problems, trauma. Stay present. Stop romanticizing the holidays and be realistic. And remember, there is always hope. Again, it's the most beautiful time of the year. That's how I started this. And that's 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 a myth that, that many of us um, buy into. And when I say buy into, I do mean spend money on. So let's be realistic, especially at this time with inflation causing so many financial problems. So keep a stress journal, schedule time to stress. How much time do you need? When is that time? Get your stress out of the way and then move on. It's a really great technique. Find new ways to enjoy spending time alone, maybe with nature, maybe with regular journaling, maybe with exercise. This is a great one for any time of the year. Make a list of low cost, no cost activities and do them, do them, refer to them, use them instead of having time on your hands and jumping online or going shopping. Practice relaxation techniques. They work and most everyone knows some and knows that they can be helpful. If you need help, ask for it. I happen to really love this concept and this graphic. I would suggest that you take a moment right now to either think about someone you could ask for help if you needed it, or using this concept with clients when we do everything we can to avoid feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Um, we're, we're being proactive. We need to be more proactive. We need to stay present. And a worry jar is a great way to do that. And you schedule time to worry. You write your worries on little pieces of paper and you put them in the worry jar. And when you're done, you leave your worries with the jar. And certainly volunteering to help others who are less fortunate. And sadly, we all know there are so many people struggling right now. And sadly, all of the time. Look for occasions to laugh. That's why I shared that cartoon with you earlier. Make time to honor a loved one's memory. Make your own holiday playlist. Create new ways, different ways, less expensive ways to celebrate the holidays. Focus on what has and is going right in your life, not on what has gone wrong or isn't currently helpful. Let go of what is no more. Limit shopping time online and in stores. Don't allow others to intimidate or question your spending or gift choices. Set those boundaries, set them for others, but set them for yourself too. Set your spending goals, set your holiday goals, 
and stick to them. Plan your holiday spending ahead of time and live by that plan. Don't, don't build that. Rethink your spending priorities. Just because you spent one way in the past doesn't mean you have to spend that way today. Track your holiday spending. It is the only way to stick to your holiday spending plan. Does it take time? Yes. Is it worth it? I think so, do you? Avoid sales and auctions. That sounds a bit counterintuitive, I understand. The thinking here though is that if it's on sale and you're saving money, well, why not buy two or three? In auctions, we know that auctions have a way of bidding higher and higher. So they really do need to be uh, monitored. Prepare for difficult money talks with partners, spouses, and children. This is an important one, I think, for working with clients in your client work because certainly it's inflation that is increasing the cost of everything and some clients and some of us just aren't going to have the money available to spend as we have in the past or as partners, spouses, children are anticipating. So prepare yourself. How can you have these difficult money talks and try to make sure that the holiday has more meaning this year if it has fewer gifts? This is a true favorite of mine. It just is. I came up with it a few years ago and haven't really returned to it lately. But when you set holiday spending guidelines, you help yourself avoid past holiday spending traps by addressing them proactively. One of the major problems that so many Americans have is that we're very reactive with our money. And so we're spending all of our time. So we saw this statistic, whether it's actually 87 months to pay off this year or last year's credit card debt. Um, if we plan ahead, then we don't have to be spending not only that money monthly, to pay those bills down, but we're able to be less reactive because when we live our lives financially reactively, then the habit becomes that we avoid our money. And when we avoid our money, we give it the opportunity to spiral out of control. So, being proactive and monitoring your money proactively is an important way to avoid impulsive choices. So some of those guidelines, I will not shop when I am tired. We do usually spend more when we're tired. I will shop at companies with good reputations. I will avoid the pressure of limited time specials. I will update my holiday spending log and we'll look at that in a second. I will wait 24 hours before making a purchase. It could be over $20, $50, $150. You put that number into your holiday spending exam guideline examples. No, identify your feelings and the situations that trigger spending. You're probably mostly familiar with FOMO, fear of missing out. 
family friction and problems will often be a trigger. Physical illness, window shopping is a good one or a bad one, actually. Wanting to be the best, give the best, do the best. Uh, wanting to feel special. Know your triggers, feeling guilty. So save money on gifts, make a holiday gift list. Live and spend, buy that gift list. Choose time over money. Give fewer gifts. Use those old gift cards. Uh, this would have been a good poll. How many of you have gift cards that you never use? Check to see if they're still available to use. Combine your orders to reduce shipping charges. Shop early online so you can factor in delivery time and not experience what so many people experienced last year, which was not having their gifts in time for the holidays. Stop trying to control the uncontrollable. Stay focused on what you can control. And as this graphic shows, there is a lot you can control. And we finish up with the really good news. The holiday season will eventually end. It always does. How do you want it to end for you? Do you want to have debt that you're now going to spend one, two, five, ten months paying off? How many of the gifts that you spend that money on will make a difference in other people's lives? Ask yourself the hard questions and make the hard choices. So we're about to get to our surprise for you um, and then try and answer some of your questions. Uh, let's finish up with a few of our free resources for you. You really, and this link is in the Q&A, I believe it is, if you aren't receiving our financial social work newsletter, which is curated for financial health and wellness, and published and delivered every Tuesday and Friday, you're really missing out because we include the best articles that we feel our community will benefit from. Know that while no one chooses to have money problems, sadly, most people do. No one can or needs to know everything about money, but everyone needs to know certain things about money, meaning that what I might need to know or you might need to know will be different than every could be different than everyone else at this training. But there are certain things, of course, that we all should know about money. One of them would certainly be that we need to raise more money-wise children. Until we stop raising generation after generation of financially illiterate men and women, we will continue to experience financial problems, stress, anxiety, trauma, and insecurity. So next month's webinar, you can register for it now, is Financial Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And we finish up the year with a free webinar and training on the economics of enough. And on the website, we have lots of free eBooks you can download. And we have lots of essays that are the wisdom and words of financial social work graduates. And here we have 
our gift to you. We do understand the economy is difficult right now and the cost of the certification might seem out of reach. So until the 21st of this month, we are offering a holiday discount code, which is now 200. So with the code, and that is, and it requires a one-time payment, um, then it, the cost is only $495. Our students have six months to complete it. It is self-study and self-paced, but all of us at the Center for Financial Social Work are available if you need or want us. Um, it includes all the materials plus the final exam. And I want you to know that the other part of our gift is we've created handouts for all of you that include all of the self-care strategies that we just shared with you, along with a gift list cost estimating sheet and this favorite holiday spending guidelines. I hope you'll use them and I hope they'll be helpful to you. And so you can now take those handouts from the handouts place <laughs> uh, and now we can take some questions. Olga, do we have questions to be answered? Mm -hmm. Uh, how do we use this information to help clients? Well, I think one of the best ways to use it and one of the reasons we made the handouts for you is with the handouts. Discuss. You can reproduce those handouts and you can review them with your clients. You can have them set their own guidelines. Work with them on that. Talk to them about being proactive. Talk to them about having those difficult discussions with family. Those are all behavioral pieces that are much more helpful. A lot of the work we do um, may include or focus on creating a budget. And while budgets are one of the most important financial tools available, they are not engaging and they're really not behavioral because most people have already been told they need a budget and their eyes glaze over and they're no longer really paying attention to all of the better ideas that we have for them. So that would be the simplest and best way I think you could help clients. You can certainly share the recording with them. It will be on the website and on YouTube and probably Facebook in not too long a time. So those are my primary suggestions as this hour winds down. And I know people have to get on with the rest of their day. Is there anything else, Olga? Uh, yeah, Deborah is asking, what is buy now and pay later? Oh my goodness, good for you, Deborah. Buy now. <sighs> You're probably not doing much shopping online. And I say double good for you. It means that, <laughs> that you buy something and it's broken into smaller payments um, on most websites, including, I believe, Amazon. Um, if you click buy now, pay later, if the cost is $20, um, you can pay 
in, in four and so in yes in four separate payments so you give your credit card and it's charged five dollars this month five dollars next month and five dollars then etc so for four payments you pay five dollars and you've paid off the twenty dollars that's if you remember to pay it off if you have the money to pay it off and then it's interest free but it is not interest free if you miss those payments and you don't pay it off and then it will affect your credit so don't look for it deborah and don't use it and i feel that way for everyone who's on the training thanks for the question and you're not the only one i I, I did think that everyone knew what that was, but just yesterday, someone else didn't know what it was either. Anything else, Olga? Uh, yes, uh, Christine is asking, um, is it, I became a graduate in October, 2020, uh, the new certification, is it a new information? 2019, in 2020? Yeah, October. Um, it is it is new information. It's it's a new program, very beautiful, very reflective and interactive. Um, but it's a three year renewal, so you will get a notification. You wouldn't have to renew until at least twenty twenty three. So we're glad you're here, and we're glad you're part of our financial social work community. Thanks for asking. You can see that actually in your account on the Financial Social Work website if you log into it. I hope that's helpful. Anything else? Uh, we don't have any more questions, but we have two comments on the poll. We had uh, how do customers plan to pay for their holiday spending? Uh, do you want me to? Yes, to... please. Yes. Uh, so, um, Valerie? said i selected other i shop off season so i will be holiday shopping from my tubs storage tubs and shona um said i give my niece and nephews cash and investments and i plan to contribute to holiday meals or use credit card points to buy gifts to buy gifts for any adults i wish to celebrate with by giving a small gift that's I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. I had thought that maybe under other, some people might say that they make their gifts, you know, do some baking or sew something, knit something. Um, I had considered putting that in the poll. I have to be honest with you. I'm one of those people that shops throughout the year too. So kudos to us, right? Okay. Well, I think we covered as much as we can. I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And I hope to see you back here next month. And I hope you're in a position to take advantage of our special discount code. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Stay well. And we'll see you next month. Bye now. I hope you took your hand out too.